Diane, I'm listening to a podcast, Black Lodge Trivia Night. I've never heard so many game aspirations in my life. So anyway, that's how I lanced the boil on the end of my... Oh, we're recording. What's up, guys? How's it going? Black Lodge Trivia Night. Oh, are you drinking a G&T like a classy motherfucker? Well, yeah, I'll get into wine a little bit. Nice. Um, yeah. Wow. Matt's still just trying to figure out why I was lancing a boil like on on the on the recording. He's done. He's 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 calling it quits, folks. You know what? We're going to find out where that boil was lanced on the discord. Yep. Hello and welcome to Black Lodge <laughs> Trivia Night. We're an actual play and sometimes we discuss role playing games. On that, we have the whole crew tonight. Art, Patrick, fellas. hey, how's it going? So, <laughs> it's a special <laughs> evening today. I mean, it's like it's a little special. It's not like we've been here a year. I have Happy New Year, Champagne, everybody. Love it, nice, love it. To us, gentlemen, to us, yeah. Happy One we, Year. We did a whole year. We uh, did. Yes, this Prost. is GNT. Yeah, because this is what I was drinking in the first. Uh, First Amphime coffee. Oh, Very nice. Look at that. Mm. So I figured it's time to bring it back to celebrate. There we so go. So we, we haven't had a full crew of Damfine coffee in a while, which will be nice. Uh, do a little recap, a little look forward, and then whatever else comes up naturally. But before we do that, I have some statistics to kick us off. Oh, nice. If, nice. Uh, if you want to do some trivia first, Art, we got some business oh. to take care of. Well, yeah, I've got actually a. So usually when we do our trivia, we do trivia inspired by uh, David Lynch's Twin Peaks. But tonight I grabbed some trivia questions from the very first damn fine coffee. Whoa. Um, what? One, did you run so, this past management? I did not. This is just, uh, this is going off the cuff. So I've got a whole bunch of questions. Do do we can do as many or as few as you want. Um, some of them might be geared more towards one or the other because the person who I'm referring to might... Obviously, you have the answer right at hand, but first question, you ready? Yep. Rock. Who read the intro in the initial Damn Fine Coffee? Patrick did. Yeah, I was about to say, I think I did. All right. Here's another little easy warm up. Was my smoke alarm beeping? No. In the first Damn Fine Not Coffee. Not in the first episode. All right. Uh, let me see. Um, in the intro that Patrick read, he nailed. A really tough to pronounce word. Do you remember what that word was? I feel like I should. Oh, Neil Arthotep. Mm, nice. That's correct. But then you fumbled. An easy <laughs> yeah, that's word. right. Do you remember what that word was? <laughs> no, what did uh, I fumble? I don't well, remember, you know, I, but I, I, don't I remember, remember this happening now. <laughs> you fumbled Diane. <laughs> yeah, that's right. It was something ridiculous. That's funny. Nice. Yeah. Uh, let me see. Um, let me see. I got something here. Matt yeah. was wearing a hockey jersey mm -hmm. in the first episode. Yeah. Does anybody remember what team that jersey was for? It's Would the, have been the Canes? Yeah, I was about to say it's the Canes. I think uh, I, was no. Canes I was wearing the Jets that night. I thought it was the Hartford Whalers. I thought I saw. Oh, him. okay, yeah, that's the Canes like retro throwback. Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. I was wearing yeah, the so, Whalers. All right, we we here. get a half a point for that. Yeah. Okay, uh, let me see. Uh, another thing again. This is more for Patrick. Is what year did Matt say he started playing RPGs? It was recently. It was. I don't remember. I, it was twenty something. Two thousand ten. Two thousand twelve. Uh, 2019 right oh, 2019 damn. that's right damn now this is a question maybe more for matt in the original damn fine country coffee patrick mentioned that most of his rpg sessions prior to black lot trivia night involved two systems D, &D. And, okay um call of cthulhu no patrick no, do you D &D. savage worlds savage oh worlds. Yep. yeah nice okay. stuff all right uh question maybe more for patrick okay patrick was Matt rocking a stash in the yes. first? Damn yes, he was. Yes he, yes, he was. That's right. That's right. Uh, November. Here. It's Lick coming back. Beth. And I. <laughs> it was know. May, Patrick. We're doing our one year anniversary. It wasn't November. <laughs> mm, I mean, there was a baby shortly after that. So it's mm. it's all fuzzy. Uh, let me see. Another question. Who asked the trivia questions in the first damn fine coffee? Actually, Matt did, didn't he? 
I that's right. It was Matt. Yeah, yeah. That's right. That's right. Uh, this one's a little obscure. So, Patrick, this might be very tough. Matt told us how he discovered Pathfinder 2nd Edition in that first Amphine Coffee. Do you mm-hmm. remember what led him to that system? Who had you just interviewed on? No. No. Mm-hmm. No, that came afterward. That came afterwards. Uh, I don't know. I don't remember. Do you remember, Matt, what you said? So it was one of two things. Your video led me. There was the video that D&D is trash. I don't think that was the direct eye. I think it was a Reddit <laughs> thread that said, like, what companies are killing it right now. There you go. Yeah, and it, it was, was a Reddit that's, thread. That's where nice. specifically I found Pathfinder. But I was looking at that because of a video that Art posted uh, that basically said D&D is trash. Nice. <laughs> I remember that now. Yeah. That's going to be the box quote. D&D is trash. D&D is trash. Coffee. I apologize. Um, there's like a gap in my green screen tonight. I'm just going to pop my basement. Still a shit show. So Paul, nice. let's use in advance. Uh, let me see. Uh, do you guys remember what the first trivia question was? Mm. It was a season one, episode one question. Oh, it was. Uh, uh, was it? Was it? Um, who had the locket? It was nope. something with no, that was later, wasn't it? Was it a Leo question? Uh, no. The oh, question okay. was, how does Agent Cooper take his coffee? Oh, yeah. And of course, the answer was black as midnight on a moonless night. I gave uh, you a little softball. The <laughs> first one. That's right. And I, I think we barely, I don't know if we got it. Or maybe Patrick almost uh, got pretty close. I think I said I think black, as, close. black as midnight, but I probably missed the rest of the quote. Right, right. And then the final trivia question that I have here. Uh, let's see. What was the first official discussion topic? Ooh. Wasn't it? Was baby RPG, like not baby RPGs, but but uh, rules light RPGs was the second one, wasn't it? That may have been the first one, actually. Was it? Was it? Yeah, because we did we did uh, some shows before we had a damn yeah. fine coffee. I'll go with was it rules light. Uh, nope. The first topic was role playing versus combat. Do you prefer role playing, which is a damn fine cup of coffee, or do you prefer combat? Oh, nice. Which was a slice of cherry pie. Oh, we were so cute with that. Oh, wow. I know, right? Oh, we were so young. Um, yeah. So there you go. That was. Sort of the thing. I mean, I pulled some other ones. I mean, one quick bonus. Do we remember who introduced each of us to Twin Peaks? It was so basically, yeah. Matt, can you? Guess Patrick was mind? us, right? Yeah. Like we introduced Patrick. Right. My we brother introduced me, and Art was your friend. Yep. 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 Friend in grad school. Yeah. yeah. At the University of Miami. That's right. University of Miami. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Uh, so there you go. A uh, little bit of trivia. It's a little. <laughs> I guess self-indulgent, but um, circle you know, jerk is the word you're looking for, but that's okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But that's what we're here for tonight. So, well, um, we're just going to keep the circle jerk going. So fantastic. gentlemen, we have done 14 different systems over the last year. Wow. Whoa, in various amazing. forms. Does anyone remember the first thing we played? Uh, it was Art and I. Oh, yeah. it was cyberpunk. Uh, not cyberpunk, but nope. That was number two. Cyber, cyber plus P and K, cyberpunk, whatever, was right. number two. It was the long dark space between the stars. That's right. That's and right. then Patrick and Art followed it up with Conspiracist, and then we finally started Call of Cthulhu. We've done four Bookhouse Boys topics. Mm. Um, one of those was Art talking about Foundry. There were three systems we've talked about. With, I'll turn this into a trivia. I'll, I'll steal Art's thunder there. Nice. Do you remember all the games we've done for Bookhouse Boys? Dragon, uh, the most recent one for sure. Yep, that's one. Two more. Uh, wait, which one did you say, Patrick? Dragon Bane. Yeah, the other two were Index Card RPG, which was yep. you and Matt, and then the third one was Deus Volt, which that's is Patrick right. and Art. Yeah. Nice. Wow. There we go. Um, surprisingly, only. Well, I guess it's not that surprisingly. Almost like a 50-50 blend of what I would consider rules light and like full bore RPG. So we had Vasin, Arts One Ring, Cyberpunk Red, Dragon Bane, Call of Cthulhu, Pathfinder. And then Starforged is probably in the middle there. 
Mm -hmm. then cyberpunk long dark saves between the stars conspiracist entity english eerie midnight melodies rune that's it so almost 50 50 in our how deep and hard we like things versus Mm. rules light that's a that's a pretty good spread i gotta say and a good amount of solo stuff and a good amount of together stuff now granted i've been disappeared for over half of the of the year but right right yeah that's okay Eh, it's the thought that counts right well (laughs) yeah um it's always the best when we have the three of us together but we did play some really cool and amazing things i don't know if we want to start with do we want to start with the cream of the cream like what our favorite was or where do you guys want to start tonight i think we should end with that maybe or i don't think we should start with that softball nelson all right. What if we? Why don't we do biggest surprise? Like, what surprised us the most? Whether it was a moment in role playing, a system surprising us the most, or anything like that, we could start there. This was the only one I prepped for. The only question that I prepped. Okay. For. Well, you go first. Our breakup with Call of Cthulhu was very surprising yeah. to me because all of us came in fairly hot and bothered for Call of Cthulhu. I think I you were. I was. The- I was already cooling on it. Yeah, but I, oh, I feel like we were all really excited to come in and play that. That was kind of our first big system, too, that we that we tackled, if I remember correctly. Mm-hmm. But it, yeah, just very surprised by that. It's all in a box getting ready to get shipped out to Noble Knight behind me. So really? Yeah. It's gone. Oh, wow. And Matt, you did you purge most all? What did you end up doing? Uh, I think. I have like the, you know, they redid the like 20th anniversary box. Mm-hmm. I got to right. try to get rid of that. I think I still have that. I think all the other stuff is gone. Wow. wow. Okay. So, we broke, um, that was a hard breakup. Hmm. Yeah, I, I would just, I would just do it with on. other things. Right. Yeah, I am. I right. kept, I kept Harlem Unbound for a long time, just as source material, but it's like, I'm not. Yeah. 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 It's fine. It's, it's not, it's not even that big a deal. And I'd, I'd play Call of Cthulhu someday again but i just it's like when i'm limited on space my basement's all jacked up like yeah why keep it around yep what about you art you have a biggest surprise uh so for me my biggest surprise um man i I think it was twofold one i actually was pretty surprised when we all sort of broke up with cthulhu the second one i would say and this one's a little bit more personal um i was surprised how much i enjoyed solo rpgs Mm. Um, because I, if you had asked me before this, I would, I'm never going to touch them. Mm. Uh, but I ended up really enjoying basically everything, everything that, that put through its paces. Um, do you think, and Patrick, you didn't, you did a solo session mm -hmm. as well. Do you guys think you enjoyed those because you're talking into a microphone and like, even though you're not interacting with an audience, like. I like some of the stuff I do on solo RPGs. I like the world building in Star Forged. I've done a significant amount of that mm-hmm. and I write it down and stuff. But then like when it comes to actually play that stuff and even Dragon Bane, I did a good amount of solo play of, of Dragon Bane. Um, but then I lost interest pretty quick because it's just like, like I get enjoyment out of it. Sure. But I think it's losing the, I don't know. I don't want to always write it down. And anyways, so why do you guys think you enjoyed it so much? Go ahead, Art. You, uh, you've done more of it. I'll, I'll say it's because I was recording it. Um, yeah, that's... yeah. I, I, the reason why before Black Lives Matter United, I never would have because I'm not going to journal it. I'm not going to write it down. Yeah, you know, because I was able to talk it through without having to write it. You know, mm-hmm. it it was a lot more. And then you know, it gave me it sort of gave me an excuse to pull out like a VTT and play around with it. Um, so it was entirely uh, because of that. So. Which, uh, you know, is one of the things that's, you know, been really great about doing this so far is that there's a few things that I would not have tried if if it weren't for Black Lodge Trivia Night. And that's one of them. So, nice. yeah. Yeah. And same same here. I mean, it's just even the even the after the after action of getting, you know, I, I think I had one or two people comment on my video for Star Forge, which is fine. You know, that's one or two. Thanks, mom. And. Mm-hmm uh you know even just that like oh man that's so cool like okay cool so somebody actually you know got to sit and enjoy this and it wasn't just me that enjoyed it you right know? there's a lot of things i can do by myself that i enjoy just by myself go on 
So anyway, that boil we were talking about earlier. <laughs> Let's swing back around to that. But what about you, Matt? Do you think would would the recording aspect of it sway you one way or another? Yeah, it also like just removes like the laziness element, right? Like you don't have mm -hmm. to write everything down. You have this right. record of it, and like uh, you want to share the story. It's it's yep. cool. Like when I right. build a cool Star Forged idea, it's like I want to share that idea. Shit, when I make a cool Pathfinder idea, I just want to character i just want to talk about it you know so i want to share and collaborate and and make it be a thing that's out there so someday i'll do some stuff but who knows when yeah good good what about all right let's go i'm gonna go pull up the list of questions now because sure. we actually we actually <laughs> wrote questions and i think i'm up to say a question now uh and we all matt you didn't say you were drinking anything tonight we're gonna do that i'm gonna ask you what you're drinking tonight just drinking water. <laughs> wow, you fucking nerd. It's not a thing. It's not a thing. <laughs> wow. Okay. What was the best? What was your most memorable moment, Matt? Mm, Tell us about uh, your Tell cyberpunk, about cyberpunk with art. Nice. And he brought in that recording of the uh, subway. Vo the voiceover for the subway yeah that was um cool. and just the whole presentation and the twist that that story takes was was really memorable there was also a cliffhanger for vason mm -hmm. that was just like oh shit yeah yeah like it, it was vason was a nice slow build because we had that introductory um setting where it's like Mm -hmm. Oh, we're introducing characters. We're not really getting into it. And then we build on it. And then we build on it. We end on this cliffhanger with like a spirit charging through my body. Yep. And that was, that was, uh, that was awesome. I, I'm glad. Yeah. I'm glad those, those landed. I mean, obviously I can't take credit for writing either one. Um, the, the, the VO comes with the, the module when you buy it from, I think itch.io for cyber. Oh, nice. That's cool. Yeah. That I didn't make that. That was, uh, that's provided with the, uh, mind the gap intro adventure when, uh, when I bought it. Mm. And then of course, you know, I didn't write the vase adventure, but I, I think that was a good, uh, good spot to end on that session. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I do think, I do think you're right that there was something by dragging out the build a little bit by adding that intro. Um, maybe it didn't feel like the thing just sort of sped right through. Uh, and I, I think that helped. Um, yeah. What about you, Patrick? Oh, so I've got two, uh, and one of them involves all three of us, and one of them was you two. Uh, I really enjoyed Rizzo the Rat. Is <laughs> it's solid. top top tier comedy moments, uh, and I've just that that was a a wonderful time. Very frustrating in the moment uh, for a side quest, you know, just completely kind, optional room. kind of garbage room <laughs> and then not, yeah, that gar whole not garbage like but you know what i mean that whole yeah. second floor well the whole dungeon for pathfinder uh so patrick's referencing probably the second to last or yeah. or third, third to, to last, last episode of of pathfinder 2e um but that whole dungeon really turned into a shit show for you guys just on <laughs> yeah. like every new room was just a new um like blind luck getting through it it's or so having a rat challenge you more than the final boss you know yeah, it's right. so yeah. right well we we figured out our characters as we went along too i think that you know because we had played with marugu and and sardis we played what four sessions five sessions total compared right. to christoph and eladrin El elrin mm -hmm. elrin something like which that. were also yeah. four sessions oh well okay <laughs> fair enough we played Maybe. we played nine episodes of pathfinder with a zero session Maybe I just like Marugu better. <laughs> <laughs> I confess. So that, that's an interesting question. Um, I preferred my second character yeah. as well. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah. yeah. I, the Not concept. That I was, oh, sorry. Go ahead. Oh, no. no I was just going to say the concept at, for the first characters. We had a lot of fun brainstorming the concept, but I think doing the not independent character creation, but just just letting our freak flags fly for. Mm the character the second characters was 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 a ton of fun so yeah and they seemed better equipped to survive yeah. at low levels um well they didn't yeah. die so that, you know despite our efforts every single made effort made <laughs> yeah oh man yeah so i'll say um <laughs> I, I for this one i thought about doing the the 
spoiler the TPK in Pathfinder. No. Oh uh, yeah, <laughs> I thought that was pretty funny. So but funny. I'm gonna go with the uh, the coin logic puzzle yeah. sequence no, into no. disarming the trap into the next room with by tossing kobold corpse, corpses. So good. Um, but mainly, you know, brute forcing a logic puzzle <laughs> by just falling backwards into it by pure luck. Uh, it wasn't. It wasn't that we solved it. That was the moment. No, it was the Matt sort of frozen smile yeah. on his face, yeah. where he's just like, <laughs> then he uh, has to give it to us. Yeah, um, yeah, you got the right answer. The Swiss <laughs> yeah. Swiss Army Cobalt will be for is still emblazoned <laughs> in my head. Yes, <laughs> yeah. never never leave home without your without your pocket <laughs> Cobalt yeah, corpse. Yeah, uh, yeah, that was amazing. I forgot about that line. Yeah. There's a lot of good moments in Pathfinder. Like they a lot of the games have been fun, but I yeah. feel like Pathfinder really brought like you know, like riding uh oh, so I mean, every on. room. You yeah. guys somehow like we start off with some rats and it's basic, and then we have this like image of of the fountain of Morogu riding the fountain and it becoming like the epic, most epic castle defense thing that was ever <laughs> conceived so in the good. realm. Balloon uh, popper. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. I mean, I try to even think like even the stuff leading up to the dungeon where we're we're talking to the gnome is mm-hmm. the halfling. I mean, that was great, you know. Well, you know, there. I think I sent some geriatrics down. To the, uh, <laughs> so fucking good. Yeah, like, she needs to be a recurring character every time we play Pathfinder. Like she needs Just to give Tamily us every... is always. Yeah, she's always our quest giver. Yep, every <laughs> single time, no matter uh, where we are. Yeah, it was so good. You know, final boss of of uh, Kingmaker, and it's still fucking Tamily. So. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Spoilers. Yeah, <gasps> your final quest is me. <laughs> it was me, oh. Austin. It was me all along. <laughs> 90s kids will get that reference. Oh, so good. <laughs> so good. Oh, man. I will say, I did, I went back and listened to some of the conspiracist stuff, too. And I, I had, that was stupid fun art. Like, it was just, all that of was it was good. Yeah, and, and, and I gotta say, like, it took me a while to, let me, let me walk that back. Um, Like, I felt like it was, you were really doing it really well. It didn't occur to me that much that you were just going off the cuff, making oh, yeah. it up, and um yeah it seemed it was a really good really fun uh, and i think i even asked you like you know does the game sort of give you systems or something to help spark ideas because i felt like you were really coming up with a lot of good stuff that i had a great time with a lot of good. weird fun stuff i'm just a weird fun guy art that's mm-hmm. all that is so where were we what were we talking about we were um, best moment yeah, yeah best moment i i did want to say um we, we talked about like biggest surprise mm-hmm. um I wanted to sort of just dial back a little bit on that one. What was your biggest surprise system wise? Mm. Like we have the mm. sort of like sort of the moment. What what about, uh, you know, of the systems we've messed with? What do you think your biggest surprise was there? Ooh, I have a few. Go for it, Matt. Like one from picking it up. Like once I read it, I knew it was going to be solid. Um, but prior to that, I was like, well, this, this seems kind of cool. It was Midnight Melodies. Mm-hmm. just mechanically the setting i mean spoiler alert, that's probably my favorite setting yeah um that was that was stellar just how much i liked cyberpunk red mm-hmm. um that's something we'll return to for sure i mean cyberpunk red is it's one of those systems it's not quite as bad as um oh what's the fantasy one uh shadow run Shadowrun, like, everyone yeah. shits on the new version of shadow run it's the same thing with vampire the masquerade and werewolf where it's just old timers or, or long established fans that are upset with what the game company did but the new version of cyberpunk red it's is stellar um and i don't maybe it's not quite as extreme as like shadow run where some people don't touch the newest edition of shadow run rightfully so but i think they fix a lot of the shadow run issues that's neither here nor there but I had a low bar for Cyberpunk Red, and it kind of really surprised me. The other one was just Dragon Bane. Mm. Mm. Um, because like I completely ignored the Kickstarter. I was like, no, this isn't. I don't need another thing like this. I don't need a old school feel RPG. I had old school essentials at the time. Never played it, and um, Dragon Bane was is stellar and continues to be stellar. And I can't wait for more of that system. So, uh, all three of those equally, and for different reasons. 
Yeah. How about you, Patrick? Is there any surprises for you of the systems? I think so. Again, playing in half as much as you guys have. Uh, I think my biggest surprise, even just listening to it, was how much Midnight Melodies like that was an awesome game that you guys played. And it was mm-hmm. I, I every like I couldn't wait to listen to the you guys did that over. No, you just did it over one episode. But I, I couldn't wait for the twists and turns in that. I was really, really excited about that and, and really enjoyed every every minute of that. And you guys put a lot into it and I, I enjoyed it. So that was a big surprise. And honestly, Pathfinder, like it was I thought Pathfinder was just going to be another kind of generic D20 fantasy role playing game. And it wasn't. And I had a ton of fun with it. So. Mm. And I'm I'm glad that we did it, and I'm glad that we're going to come back to it. And yeah, and I'm also excited for when we go back to Cyberpunk Red and to Genesis. And how's that Captain's Log coming for Star Trek? Uh, <laughs> so, awesome. Well, we'd have to start that to go back to it. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. Is <laughs> right. We talked about it for a while, but yeah, you know, it's yeah. but but yeah. How about you, nice. Mark? Uh, for me, um, I think for system, it would probably be. Uh, cyberpunk cbr pnk uh never oh yeah for sure yeah never played a like a blades in the dark or forge in the dark i guess Mm -hmm. is what it'd be uh system i didn't know what to expect from it i you know and and i did struggle to wrap my head around it a little bit Mm -hmm. um, because it was new to me but seeing just sort of the potential of what that kind of simple die roll of success success with complication failure like just how much you could just do with that without mm-hmm. sort of dumping, you know, tons of cruft onto your system. I, I was really pleasantly surprised. Makes me really curious to try, you know, Band of Blades, mm-hmm. uh, uh, the other, the other one, the Dark, not Forge in the Dark, but uh, Blades in the Dark, Blades in the Dark. Uh, even like, what's the space one? Is Scum and Villainy? Scum and Villainy, and then yeah. Brinkwood is another one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What, um, what's, what's amazing about cyberpunk i don't actually know how you're supposed to say that game out loud cyberpunk um is reading and prepping band of blades which we're gonna play offline is how much of that game it captures in a pamphlet whereas band of blades is it's it's helpful but it's so full of just fluff and saying the same thing like hey a six is an ultimate success but you really need to consider like or or a a success without consequences but you need to consider like the situation and and how the degree of success and uh, is it a risky maneuver and things like that and that stuff stripped away from cyberpunk but you don't lose any of that in cyberpunk it's really impressive that they can take that whole concept of a game design and boil it down to very rules light um, yeah without 300 pages of stuff <laughs> and i thought it worked really well it did um yeah and and you know a lot of the supplemental material that i ended up picking up later you know gives you ways to generate random missions looking at the tables i'm like yeah i could see how this could work really well um in my head i feel like it could work for you know mini campaigns uh doesn't have to just be one shots i feel like there's enough interesting stuff there to carry it um yeah, I was I was really surprised by just um and also I think it helped that they provided a really there's I don't know if we've talked about this before, but there is a there's an art to the intro adventure. Mm-hmm. Um and I think Cyberpunk nails it uh with its mind the gap. It 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 mm-hmm. tells you exactly what it wants to be. Um it it sort of gives a good model of what it wants what it thinks its adventures should be like dropping you right into the middle of the action and so on and so forth. And, and it was a really nice presentation. Like I said, they gave you like these audio files to help, you know, establish, you know, a little more ambiance if you wanted it. It was just, yeah, there's a, there's a real art to the intro adventure and I think they nailed it. I agree with you. It's interesting because I want to play both cyberpunk red and cyberpunk and they scratch different itches, although take place in, they could be in the exact same world right like cyberpunk could just be jammed into cyberpunk red and i don't know what i want differently out of both of them i just know i want to play both of them yeah uh, but i do agree that that first mission was pretty awesome um so 
And that's that's really interesting, Matt, because if I remember correctly from both of the cyberpunk games, you said like cyberpunk is not anything that you give two hoots about. Like if I remember correctly, that you weren't horned up at all for anything cyberpunk. And that's that's been a change. If I'm remembering remembering correctly on that, maybe I I did. Uh, Maybe it was that I just don't have a lot of experience there. I honestly don't remember because I think by that point I was already looking at Shadowrun. Okay. And the Forged in the Dark. There's like a Forged in the Dark and PBTA version of Mm -hmm. uh, Shadowrun. So I think I was interested in that. Maybe it's experience, and also at the time I I could have been. I don't I don't know. Gotcha. Yeah. I I just maybe maybe I'm misremembering, but I I seem to remember. Because it wasn't art, because art, you kind of started in cyberpunk-esque stuff, correct? A long time ago, I played, yeah, yeah the old school tw- uh, cyberpunk 2020, um, yeah. and I was definitely intimidated by it, but I did play it and loved it. Okay. Yeah, but it's it's just, it. I feel like it wasn't something that was on any of our radars at the start of when we started doing this. I know Pathfinder was, I know that, you know, Pathfinder was. Um and Call of Cthulhu were like, those were the two big things like, oh my God, we need to play these and Deadlands and Savage Worlds. But just how much fun you guys have had with the cyberpunk stuff has been, has been awesome to see. So and I'm very jealous and really looking forward to more monologuing vampire cyber dudes. <laughs> I, I have to say like, we've done a couple of like pre-written intro adventures mm-hmm. here. And mm. I think they've all been kind of bangers. I think. So. Okay. So let's, we did scratch scratch. Okay, that one wasn't. You want, a take, you want to walk that comment back a little bit? Well, is it that was... like considered like an intro, or is that just? Oh, like uh, a... you said pre-written. Sorry. Okay, you mean intro, yeah. intro. Yeah, because yeah. like you know, Otari is designed as like an intro, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. you know, Mind the Gap is designed in an intro. Um, what other ones? The Vase and one. The Vase and one is designed as That's an intro, really and I feel like yeah. Dragon Bay. Well, we're doing Dragon Bay and offline. Yeah. Yeah. Right, really right. Session of it. Um, but that is yeah, that is designed as an intro, and that one's oh. pretty straightforward and good so far. That Vason, set that, up. that Vason one slaps because I played it before we did Black Lodge Trivia Night, but that that intro adventure is awesome. It's, it's really good. Yeah, really, really good. So uh, English the- Eerie in a way. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I mean, we I mean, it kind of just how that book's generated and those were really good. Uh, it's as close to a intro as you can get with running it and how it was. And then, of course, right. we modified it. Um, Yeah. Yeah. Those those were good. I agree. Have you guys ever run in, uh, you know, it doesn't have to be as part of this. Um, any other like memorable intro adventures that you've run over the years or whatever? I mean, Lost Minds of Fandelver for everything yeah. 5e mm-hmm. is, is solid. Yeah. I'm trying mm-hmm. to even think, looking over at the, at the shelf of shame. Is that really sort of the bar? Because it's not just an intro adventure. Like they give you a whole open-ended campaign. And no, so I, I feel would... like it accomplishes more than... Is it that different than I don't I don't see it any different than Menace Under Otari. Yeah, Um, because you can go from you don't have to do any. In fact, the group I first ran Lost Mine of Fendelver through just went straight into Lost Mine of Fendelver and didn't didn't go to like the Druids thing or whatever. Mm -hmm. You can go do as a little side because you're right. It's packed full of little side quests, um, which Menace Under Otari is not. It's very much meant to be a dungeon crawl. But like my group went straight into the dungeon crawl. Mm -hmm. Um. And do you feel like it lost anything or was it still? I mean, it would have been cool to explore the other stuff. I think maybe we may have gone to one other encampment. Uh, it's It's been you know, five years since I've done that. Okay. Um, yeah, I've been running that for my daughter and we, we did obviously the intro cave on your way to the town. Mm-hmm. Right. And then when we got to the town, we then went to like the, I guess like the mansion, you go underneath the mm-hmm. mansion. And we did that whole, and so, and oh, then they did that off. for sure. I forgot about the mansion. Yeah. Yeah. So, and, and so we are like doing a lot of the side stuff and I'm like, wow, this, this feels a little bit like playing like an old school, like Baldur's Gate mm. computer RPG where you get all these side quests, which I was not at all expecting when I picked it up to read it. Yeah. But maybe that's better because then it's like, Hey, here's an introduction to RPGs. It doesn't have to be a dungeon crawl. Yeah, it doesn't true. have to be you go into a cave. It can be this thing where you have options and you explore a mansion and you know, uh, I'm trying to think if I've done anything else. I'm sure I have, but the aliens one, uh, the Headley's hope. And then the other chariot of the gods, I would consider chariot of the gods, a intro adventure. Mm-hmm. And that's also 
super fucking good. Uh, hmm. Just throwing that out there. That's a great Hollywood ran me through that. No friend of the show. Hollywood ran us through that. And that was oh, so fucking good for what it's worth, you know, in his games. Uh, I don't know if we've all been in Hollywood games, but they're really, so. f- really fun. Um, it also like helped Cabal. as a as a side note. I played uh, I was the the company man and i was foghorn leghorn basically the entire time <laughs> nice which was fucking great uh, matt's gone blue screen he's looking at the shelf yeah i was seeing if there's anything else like intro i've ran but no yeah I, I would agree that what we have done has been fantastic mm-hmm. like yeah. Uh, and then just even just as like the pre-written stuff we've talked about scratch scratch i feel like the cyberpunk red scenario was fine um just from running it as a gm but then so like if those are near the bottom then all the other just like pre-written stuff i I thought was really solid Mm -hmm. there have been a lot more hits than misses that's for sure yeah and it's made me realize like you know when i got back into gming and playing games you know a couple years ago i felt like you know the the intro adventure i ran when i first got it back into rpgs was the one in the rule book for deus vault in the gm guide and it's it's really nice little adventure, but I ended up blowing it out because I just had so many ideas and I hadn't GM'd anything in a long time and I loved the setting. And so it, what I loved about it was that you were able to hang so much stuff on it and mm. it still was a really good story. But um, some of these pre-written stuff, it made me have a little more faith in just a pre-written adventure without feeling the need to tweak it to death or just, you know, like I ran, once we got going in the Vasin adventure, that was it. You know, I didn't add tons of stuff or anything. Um, and, and that gives me, because then I start seeing these systems like, Oh, Coriolis, like the setting itself doesn't inspire me to like come up with all my own ideas and stuff like that. But, you know, I've heard like one of the campaigns where it's pretty good, mm-hmm. you know, maybe, you know, maybe that that's okay. You just run it as is and, and enjoy it. Yeah. Yeah. You absolutely could. I think this can segue into nicely. Like one of the, one of the things we, some things we learned over the year and this was something that i heard right before we started and it's the whole concept of, of picking up you know picking up the scene and moving it to where it needs to go and i think that mm. came up in cyberpunk red probably the most because like a lot of the you know pathfinder was a dungeon crawl and then everything else was so loosey and rules light that it had to be flexible but with cyberpunk red like art you wanted to focus on this thing or that thing and then that caused me to like we need to move that and shift that and it wasn't done perfect i'm not like yanking my chain here but that is one thing that i'm still continuously like trying to implement like oh they're not going to get that clue so i need to pick it up and move it here especially as we go into like preparing fall delta green or delta green but yeah yeah what about you patrick what do you think is there something you feel like you might have learned over the last year how much i i mean just as a totally broad stroke thing just how much i missed rping this much i mean it's it's been it's been a blast playing playing every week or mostly every week and playing with the same group of guys you know it's been you know here comes the the teary-eyed circle jerk but it's been a lot of fun guys and i i i have really enjoyed having the same group to to come back to and you know the, the joke carry over between, you know, the stupid Mrs. Doubtfire references we make mm-hmm. and, the, and the lobster pot jokes, all that aside, it's it's been a ton of fun and it's it's nice to do that. So how about you, Art? Uh, the things I've learned, I, I will say this. I just assumed I was not a D20 kind of guy. Mm-hmm. Um, turns out I love Pathfinder, love Dragonbane. Mm-hmm. Um, I really liked what I've read of Pendragon. Um, Mm -hmm. yeah, I'm starting to realize like, you know, the problem might've been me all along. Uh, You're just not a D and D guy. That's all right. I just, that's what that says. Right. You know, like, and just for the people out there, I have played it. I've run it for kids and nephews Mm -hmm. and it was a lot of fun, but, um, it just wasn't interesting in a way, but, and so I just sort of, you know, and then I I had a similar reaction with old school essentials where I was like, eh, um, Mm. but it's, it's, uh, it's turned out not to be the case. Um, and then the other thing I sort of learned, I I don't think I ever really stopped to think about like how much good stuff is out there. Um, Mm -hmm. because when I was a, you know, when I was a kid, uh, there weren't 
back when you were writing were... on stone tablets. <laughs> right, right, exactly. Um, I, I feel like I'm sure there was like a, a, a variety at the time, but I just feel like now, like you can't go 10 minutes without seeing a Kickstarter yep. for something that's probably going to be pretty decent. Yep. And um, it's not good for my wallet, but there's just a lot of really good, good systems out there that I, mm -hmm. I one can't wait to get to. And two, I'm glad we were able to get to, you know, you mentioned 14 so far, like that, that's been awesome that, you know, it's been that we've been able to sort of get this running and get through those kinds of things. So what we set out to do and we've managed to do it, right. which is great. So. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Anyway, I, I don't know if that's, I, I guess that's something I learned, but, uh, I also will say, <laughs> I don't know if you guys feel this way, like getting all this set up, whoops, I just mm -hmm. my way. it was a little bit harder than I thought it would be. <laughs> um, you know, I, I give people that do this kind of stuff a ton of credit, uh, because it is not, it's fun, but it's not just something that happens on its own, you know? Yeah. So, you know, I appreciate all, everything that we've had to do more i i appreciate it more uh that we've been able to you know commit to this and make it work yeah i will say that the weekly actually helps it like there has been very few thursday nights where it's like oh man i have to <laughs> now i gotta do this i gotta do this it's more like oh shit yeah i can't wait for thursday nights to come and one thing is like pathfinder will be fresh in my mind uh, there's plenty of times whether it's alien which is like this you know great experience we've always talked about or or the genesis or whatever and that one's the problem right like it sits for a month or a month and a half or two months and then when it finally it's like oh, i have to do that tonight or even the stuff i'm playing in where i don't even really have to prep it's like ah oh, fuck because it's like it gets so like spread out and then it comes back around and then i dread it and then i have a blast when i'm in there but like the build up to it i'm just like i don't want to do this um I rarely had that feeling with this. And I think it's just because it's become routine. And it's like, Hey, Thursday nights. And it's like, Oh, what are we going to get into this Thursday? Right. Um, now, now it was pretty wild. There was, it wasn't so much that it was dreading the Thursdays. It was like that stretch where we went. Uh, it was Pathfinder into English Eerie into midnight melodies back to English Eerie, then over to cyberpunk. And I was just like, Holy shit. <laughs> Like that was yeah, a we lot. Were all over the place for a little yeah. while and i think yeah. we even talked about that we're like i think we need to sort of well it's like cyberpunk came up we're like we got to do something and like stick with it because right right and then basin um, you know and then yeah <laughs> which which helped because then like if you're going four or five cyberpunk and basin were both four episodes which is like what a sweet spot because yeah. it's enough to like you do the prep work you get it you run it for a while and about the time that seems to wrap up mm -hmm. like i'm ready to go on something else again and i'm i'm back further in the lineup but i'm like i'm ready to prep and so i'm prepping band of blades but nice right nice. And that's and that's funny that our pathfinder was two basically two four session things yeah and right it's yeah. It really <laughs> four four <laughs> sessions is the sweet spot then is what we're saying uh call of cthulhu went four sessions pathfinder yeah. had a zero sessions that went four and four cyberpunk red had a zero session it was three it otherwise like three i think it was otherwise. three yeah um and then what else did i say oh basin went for yeah look at us look at, it's almost like we're predictable mm -hmm. for four episodes a game system look at that yeah i'm kind of curious yeah i'm curious if that's where sort of we land on a lot of these things in my head it was i was thinking like seven or eight but um maybe it's four maybe that's the secret well i think i think four to eight to to take what you just said and pervert it and change it like four to eight is sweet because if you go eight like you get a sense of really accomplishing something yeah. but you're not locked into it for i was gonna say a year but pathfinder took us about a whole goddamn year <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh but like you know like if you're if we're really sticking to the schedule that's four months right yeah um, art is art's furiously scribbling in his spy game right now and he's like okay we need to remove that part that part that part to make it fit in that four episode okay. No, I, actually, it's uh, it's the opposite. I'm nervous that I haven't come up with enough for the first thing that I was thinking of trying. Um, uh, you can you, you can always a week. Yeah, you can always steal uh, Austin <laughs> Powers Austin Powers Cliff Notes and just throw them. That's right. Yeah. 
All right, so now you guys are in the Hoover Dam. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> right. And suddenly so, you find the Department of Agriculture. He, here's one that we didn't pro, propose ahead of time. But we're kind of talking about like the structure that you know, some of the stuff we're talking about for those listening, like that was all kind of a structure we intentionally put in place. We wanted to have meaningful engagements with RPGs, but not be locked into them and have trouble scheduling them for five years. Mm. And that then allowed us to play all this stuff. And we kind of talked about like, oh, we do something, then we bounce over to this. And I think we've talked about how Pathfinder want to get back to that it sounds like patrick wants some cyberpunk stuff whatever flavor yeah. it is i mentioned cyberpunk is there anything like your number one system you will want to go back to that we've already played not necessarily your favorite like the one you're f- ready to go back to first patrick i want to play basin with you guys so yeah. bad that's you know i mean i think we all want to play more dragon bane too I mean, look at look at Free League knocking it out the park. But yeah, I, know, I, right? I I don't know which one of those two I would be more excited for, you know, to either run or for Art to be like, oh, I'm going to run this or or Matt to be like, yeah, it's my turn to run Basin now. You guys play as the adventure as the as the Thursday Society. Yeah, I'm I, or both of those systems. Very excited if, to come back to. If we hadn't just wrapped Basin. I'd probably agree with you, but it's like, it's still so fresh. Yeah. Um, For me. And I tried to do this with cyberpunk. I'm sure you picked up on it, right? Like I call the guy, the reaper and then the room goes blue. Like yeah. midnight melodies, but like the campaign game somehow, yeah, yeah, which yeah. may mean like taking midnight melodies and throwing it in some other system. Call it through this back, baby. <laughs> <laughs> time to rebuy the books school of art get them all paul, back baby. honey don't ship that box <laughs> paul's business acumen strikes again tomorrow patrick's running down the the street chasing the fedex man in his robe <laughs> no i've made a mistake yep. what about you art uh let me see system again not we've... necessarily your favorite just the one like if you're like hey we have to go back to one of these right now i i think ooh so Okay, I'm going to say I'm going to pick Vason narrowly over Pathfinder. Mm. I think Pathfinder is much more of an interesting mechanical game. Mm-hmm. But I'm, I what I've sort of really discovered about myself over the last couple of years is I seem to love investigative yeah. stories, RPGs, whatever. And I want to see what Vason can do long term when you're like rebuilding the society, when you're getting a little bit deeper into the stories and the and the lore that is an interesting game because have you guys read the entire basin rule book mm-hmm. no no uh oh patrick you have okay oh, yeah because in the in the game master session section they kind of spoil something about the setting that i think would be interesting to have to like have above the table knowledge but in game because i'm like oh that's sort of interesting and I don't know if I'd want to know that as a player. Ooh, don't tell me. I can't wait to find out. Yeah, right. I that's I the thing. I don't know if I remember that. So Okay. So okay. maybe, yeah, maybe you don't remember or maybe because I, because I was sort of, and then it suddenly made, I was just realizing this, like that would be a tricky because when we were playing and I was like, oh, and then we pick it up and we all play different <sighs> members of the society. But now I'm remembering there's one detail in the game master section that I was like, ooh, I don't know if I'd want to know that as a player. It's a cyberpunk simulation, isn't it? Uh, yeah. It's mind the gap part two. <laughs> knew it. I knew it. <laughs> Um, um so yeah. interesting enough the thing i'm most torn up for right now we, we've talked about it is delta green or fall delta green mm-hmm. um there's stuff that only the the gm should know not it's not detrimental like if you're a past gm of delta green you can still enjoy the but there is a balance and there's a there's a veil that you need to maintain Um, Just from a lore perspective and like small lore perspective and like big picture lore perspective. And I thought that was really interesting as I'm prepping it. It's like, it's not something you can put back in the bag, but it also like, once you know, it doesn't ruin your game by any means. I was like, well, this is, um, this is pretty cool. Like, and and players may never know, which is kind of like another wacky thing. Like it's, it's wild. So. Yeah. Mm. Nice. Um, well, I guess, you know, we were sort of, okay, so looking forward a little bit. Um, what are you guys looking forward to the most overall? 
going forward. Go ahead, Matt. Looking forward to the most. Um, this is crazy. It's it's probably Delta Green just because I'm enjoying the lore so much and like the books and there's just a humble bundle with more of the stories and I'm 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 horned up for cosmic horror anyways, but also mm. Delta Green doesn't have to be cosmic horror. It can be Millennium. It can be X Files. Mm-hmm. It can be Supernatural. Um, so I'm wondering, like, if you take away the Call of Cthulhu motivation for your characters, can I make a game like that work? Mm. Um, but like selfishly, that's I'm very much looking forward to what how that comes together. Nice. What about you, Patrick? So I'll say it. I'll go three three small parts to Matt's one big part, which is usually how it goes. Uh, I will say I'm really excited to play Eat the Reich. Um, I think that's that's going to be a really fun. Again, I think it'll slot into three or four sessions very nicely. Um, that's going to be a ton of fun. I think it's going to be outrageous. I think it's going to be we're going to have to put like four explicative tags on that. It's going to be just. <laughs> Just just bad, and I can't wait. Bad in the worst kind of way. Um, I'm really, really excited for our return to Pathfinder. And I think I got to let me rewind for a minute. We said systems we're looking forward to getting back to. I said Vason and Dragonbane, but that was with the underlying assumption that we will be going back to Pathfinder right. at some right. point. Right. So. <laughs> Like I'm very excited to get back to Pathfinder. It's I've had a, a ton of fun with it. I want to keep playing Marugu and Sardis and and just see what what shenanigans we can get into with Tiger Stance and and emo elves and <laughs> have a good time. Um, yeah, and then just keeping up the rotation. Like I'm just I'm, yep. ex- I'm excited to see what happens in Arts the One Ring. I'm excited to play some Starforged. You know, whatever other stupid little stuff we play. You know. Let's play Pirate Borg. Like, why? Why not? Right. Like, we're it's if it's a flop for two sessions, then we play it and be done with it. So, yeah. Actually, that's that's what I'm looking forward to the most is getting the the rotation really humming along. Yep. Um, because I'm I'm really excited to see what like you decide to run on your fifth go at it. Right. Like, mm-hmm. like once we get really deep into it, like what's the stuff that keeps mm-hmm. us coming back or yep. is nice. like what, what catches our eye as, as new things start coming in. Mm-hmm. Uh, so the thing I'm looking forward to most is like, yeah, what, what are we playing like this time next year? Like yeah. what are the 14 systems or whatever that we banged out uh, in year two? Um, because I feel like, I, f- I feel like mm. the the idea it it really when you were saying like fourteen systems when you're running through all the statistics it the core of it seemed to work a lot better than I thought it would mm-hmm. I don't know what I was expecting I didn't have like ex- expectations one way or another but um that was a lot of games to get through they were all like really good games and just made me realize like maybe this is at least for me personally a, a good way to approach this and I'm really excited to see you know how deep the bench is so to speak. That's a really good point. And I know like we're going to have some easy stuff, right? Like Electric Bastion Land or or something like that is going to come off the shelf for a one shot. And that'll be really cool to do. But sad. you're right, Art. Like if we do this rotation and it's like, um, like Art's on his third system of the year. Mm-hmm. Like what is, I want to pick peek into your brains. Like I can maybe go too deep on Patrick. Eat the Reich, Savage Worlds for Deadlands. Yeah. I mean, if I'm like just guessing it, I'm obviously not holding you to that. No, but that's probably what it is. So I'm one deep on art. Spies. Mithras, spies. Mithras and spies. And then I have no clue like where you would possibly go. And then personally, I'm like 30 deep on myself. Yeah. Like, what the <laughs> fuck could I pick? Like, I'm sure you guys feel the same way. Like, you're like, I don't get what Matt's talking about. I've got this back here. I've got like. Yeah, I'm just looking at my shelf like, man, I'd love to play through Into the Reach again, like the Malifaux RPG that uses fucking cards. And oh, it's so good. Yeah. This setting is so good. And I'm even, you know, I bought that Dune RPG book. I'm like, fuck, let's, That'd let's, you know, listen Fallout. again. Fallout. Fallout. Let's Fallout's go. Fallout's been on my mind. 
Yeah. Although Modiphius just needs someone to edit their books. Oh, they're so bad. Like, just always wait for the second edition because supposedly Star Trek's cleaned up. But like, yep. I've heard the fall. I right. own the Fallout one. I just haven't read it. Like, supposedly it's a hot mess of just like organization. Like, I I, I even want to play the fucking like root RPG. Like, that just looks fun. I mean, like, I'll play, but it's it's like seventeen deep. Like, we're that's Good. that's year four. I'll play five. whatever you want. I'll play whatever you want. That was very convincing, Matt, just so you know. <laughs> I will play whatever you want. I promise Thanks. you and assure you. Thank you, sweetie. Besides, yeah. while holding up today's paper and a proof of life. Uh, yeah, thank you. Yeah, he's plugging yeah. his nose and going to the polls. I am playing my nose a little bit at the root RPG, you're right. I mean, it's, <laughs> you don't want to be. Damn. Damn. Wow, Art, what's what's after Spies? I need to, what's Telegraph for us a little bit? I, I genuinely have no idea. I mean, that's the thing, right? Like that's Dungeons guess, and Dragons so... fifth edition. <laughs> no, but like <laughs> if you were to put a no, God damn it. No, um, but no, like that's the thing. Like I mentioned Coriolis. I have a um, mm. an Andor inspired Star Wars idea. Nice. I have you could run us through to Genesis. When are uh, we going to get back to Symborum too? Like we there's yeah, some that's on Warhammer oh, yeah. fantasy. Yeah. There's just like there's just so much stuff that I'm like ideas are popping out at me and, and that's fine. You know, that's part of the fun, but, um, but yeah, I'm, I'm really, or like, yeah, I'm really curious. Like, did we come back to Pathfinder and start Kingmaker? Like, even if it's like mm-hmm. something we came back to and, and had a blast with, you know, I'm just, yeah, I'm really looking forward to seeing, you Index know, card RPG. We we're both index. so hyped on it. And we've mm-hmm. never touched it after or that. Crown and skull is his new one, which is yeah. the wilder. Oh, right. I, right. I think all three of us got the Uber Deluxe Mothership edition too. Like mm-hmm. Oh, Mothership is on is on the is on but the... <laughs> yeah, Mothership is happening. Yeah. I've got some I'm very excited for in in yeah. directions you may not expect. Nice. Like there's so it, there's so much the, the fucking Conan RPG is a ton of fun. Like I would have fun playing that. Like there's mm-hmm. another there's another art plugging his nose at that one. God no, damn. No, no, I loved it and I don't have it anymore and i regret that i I got run mine too which is too bad i yeah. donated mine to someone who was definitely going to get it to the table and yeah. i feel like that was a good cause but i do i i love i love conan yeah um and we so, need to play modifius d20 is what it sounds like that's what we've it talked about a few of them now it's time well, yeah yeah even if it is captain's log um but yeah i mean yeah like you said dune fallout um star trek what are the ones we have here Dune's Dune's probably on my short list. I I don't know what I do with it. That's such a crazy like the Conan what? is D twenty. Conan Sorry, is two D twenty. You were saying which other ones we were just talking about Conan. Right, Sorry, right, but we don't right. have it anymore. But, um, and it'd be tough to track down uh, without. Oh, World of Darkness. Yeah. Like whether like any either werewolf, hunter of the reckoning, or vampire. Mm-hmm. Um. I'm having so much fun reading and doing my own stuff with my wife and that yep. stuff. And some of the rule oh, right. implementations is really cool. Um, and so I want to do some World of Darkness stuff. We should do the vampire or the werewolf one because everybody talks about vampire. So we should do the werewolf one because hmm. then I can be my fursona and it's going to be great. I want to be the sparkly werewolf. Fuck yes. Sure. Absolutely. Can we hold uh, hands? Now we're talking. Oh. Um wow. nice. All right. Um so this is one I was kicking around. Um I, I you know, we were sort of chatting about this beforehand. I was curious what system are you definitely going to put into the rotation that the other guys are going to love and or well do love and hate. Uh World of Darkness, Vampires for Art, is that love or hate? Um I don't know. I think you will end up loving it. I think you hate the idea of role playing as a vampire. <laughs> all right i did enjoy the i mean i think you were streaming it a little bit oh um, i gotta get back to it yeah yeah I, I did enjoy that and it made me wonder like maybe i could get into it but i i will say on its face value the idea is a little sort of oh, okay we'll have to see about that i don't think i could possibly like i'm sure i could find something that patrick is gonna love i don't know if i could find something that patrick would hate See, I'm hard because I thought it would be like Pathfinder, right? Because it's crunch, like it's so crunchy and detailed that if it, like, I just want to have fun with the boys, right? Like, right. That's what I'm right. here for. Like, the sy- system doesn't matter. I'm sorry, it doesn't. Like, <laughs> not when it comes I, to fun. No. Oh, like, here's one. 
Oh, please hit me. Hit me. See if I hate it. You, no, see, Patrick, you're too hard. This would be an art one as an offense to him. PBTA, Usagi Yojimbo. What? And the whole time, all I do is talk about how Usagi Yojimbo is better than Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Ooh, yikes. Hmm. <laughs> Art's, art has left the chat. <laughs> uh... Hey, speaking of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, I'm super excited for the Last Ronin movie that's going to come out. And it's going to be awesome. I'm back. Oh, Tons man. Of- did you read Last Ronin? I so have not, I, but I'm super hyped for it. Oh, you have a, oh, you have a, uh, I know. I know. I know. Have you Get read over. Last Ronin yet, Art? No, no. I think I have it upstairs, but no, I haven't read it yet. I know. I know you have it upstairs. <laughs> I'm not sure I have it upstairs, but because <laughs> I'm glad somebody does. I do like Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles more, but um, Stan Sakai writes a wonderful anthropomorphic. Um, let's see what green screen is or there we go hold on the oh, right oh, oh. use your imaginations damn it i'm okay. not fucking with this anymore <laughs> um anthropomorphic samurai and they did a pbta based off of it uh, it's it's a lot of fun but it's not i don't think it's as good as teenage mutant Ninja turtles i was just kidding what about you guys so patrick what's a system you want to throw out there that love and hate oh so matt what, what do you think you'll throw out there that will love world of darkness yeah. World of Darkness. Like okay. that's what I think. Like I think Patrick's you're so easy going that you'll play with whatever. I don't think you'd yeah. ever come here like I hate that. Right. Unless it's like Patrick we're, be... sorry. We're we're doing this role playing game and it's literally your real life job, the role playing game or something See, like I, that. Like, I like I like my job. Like uh, it's like like papers I, please or something I, like that. I, I think the only thing that you could have said, I think the only game that I haven't oh enjoyed in the last like three years that i've played and i i enjoyed the people and i enjoyed the role playing i just didn't enjoy the system itself was rune quest mm. because it was just paul bear just... bryant the rpg all right look <laughs> i you know roll tide <laughs> All right, now let me just unzip the pants and let's go fuck a cousin. So, um, anyway, yeah, I think I think Art, you will hate the idea of playing as a vampire, and I think some of the rule innovations in the new fifth edition of World of Darkness, I think you guys maybe you don't love the system as a whole, but just some of the ideas they put in a game, combat being three rounds only, like that, like uncomfortable, but like shit, that actually makes a lot of sense because. Like usually the writing's on the wall, and especially if you're like vampires, like it's going to be bloody, it's going to be fast, and you don't need to hang around. So that's mm-hmm. fine, right? Yeah, I, I think saying like love and hate. I mean, hate obviously we're not going to hate any of it. It's just something we might be cool on, um, but it's just not as sexy as hate, <laughs> right? Something that's mildly displeasurable. <laughs> <laughs> I will be curious to see what you guys think of Deadlands. I don't. I I fucking love Deadlands, and there's so many good one shots from all of the editions of Deadlands as you can play. But I just I don't know if Wild West Cowboys are either of your thing. But I I love I mean my favorite movie is fucking Tombstone. Like I'm going to use Tombstone quotes the entire time. I'm gonna have a good time with it. I just don't That's know. That's okay. I'm gonna use Wild Wild West quotes the whole time. So it it'll <laughs> perfect. <laughs> perfect. Um Patrick, the only reason I would hate that yeah is I would get blue balls from Savage World. Because yeah. when you make a character in Deadlands Savage Worlds, you start out as a novice. Mm-hmm. And if you're making Wichita Witch, for yeah. example, which is so cool, mm-hmm. you get like one cool ability and you see these 10 other things you could do, but you yeah. don't have the. And that's like Savage Worlds, a novice character is the worst case of RBG blue balls that there is. So here's the solution to that we don't play novice characters, we play. Oh whatever. yeah, for sure. Whatever yeah. you decide. I we think when you first set up the game, you're, like, you're playing novice characters, and I was like, well, yeah. I want to take this, this, and this. Yeah, so, I got you. Anyways, that's gotcha. that's that's all. I would love that. So, so Patrick, were you saying Deadlands is like might something might be I, cool on, or something guys, you love? I think that it has it has the most potential to fall flat. I think just if if the Wild West thing isn't your shtick, mm-hmm. then it's gonna be it'll it'll. You know, it'll be okay. Cool, we did that. We did the gunslinger thing. Patrick used a bunch of Doc Holiday quotes. Okay, next. Like, I'll just no. be there for one man and one man only. 
That's Bloodbath McGrath. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm here for it. Like I will say, I actually love westerns. Um, oh, uh, never mind then. That'll be a that'll be a love. So yeah, like Deadwood is one of my all time favorite shows. So um, I've actually uh, get ready for Patrick to go off camera. I've never seen Tombstone. Wow! But I would do the research. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> I would do the research if it came up. It's um, seriously. Yeah. No. No. Well, what are we okay. doing here? Like, when did that movie come out? Nineteen ninety two. Um. Okay. I might have been old enough. Yeah, it, I don't know why Val, I didn't check that it's out. It's Val Kilmer's greatest movie, and it's also Kurt Russell's greatest movie. Ooh. <laughs> I mean, The Thing is also up there, and so is Big Trouble in Little China, but that was Kurt Russell, right? Oh, fuck. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Thank you. Have you guys uh, ever heard of a movie called Ravenous? I've heard of it, I think. Uh, it's Guilty it's, Pleasure, Escape from New York. That's all I got to say. Yeah, fair. Uh, another Kurt Russell Yep. Uh, great yeah ravenous oh. if, if you're interested in sort of like a horror western okay um yes i remember i don't know why i was having trouble sleeping but i was just like yeah this movie came on and i watched it uh-huh um and it, it it's not like it's not like spooky vampire kind of stuff it's all like grounded in reality mm-hmm. but yeah it's about like this you know old west an encampment on the edge of nowhere and what happens in that encampment and all the sort of things going on in the behind the scene i really uh, yeah i love old west stuff even when when you mix like that kind of horror elements into it now it's not supernatural which maybe is why you know i like mm-hmm. i like my my stories flavorless and <laughs> uninspired um the white people cooking of stories yes i understand yeah i i, I don't need any i don't need anything fancy Thanks. salt is spicy yeah. understood yeah. starring wcw world heavyweight champion david arquette yeah is he a champion <laughs> Yeah, wow. it was one of the like. I mean, WCW is already on the down slope, but it was one of the things that helped drive it home. Is that David Arquette was like on equal footing as Goldberg? Hmm. Boy, yeah, it's him. It's um the guy from Hunter Hunter Guy October Pierce. Who's, uh, guy yeah. Pierce is one of the but the Hunt for October guy who was Sean Connery. No, um, he ended up getting arrested and sort of, and then it was the guy who starred in Train Spotting. Um, David guy Pierce. Batista. No, no. Um, it doesn't matter. Robert, Robert Carlyle. Robert Carlyle. Yeah. I don't look it up, but yeah. Um, there, yeah. But anyway, I won't spoil it because it's it was definitely not what I was expecting um, in a good way. And it made me realize, like, I like the Old West enough that it doesn't have to be, like, in guardrails. It can, you know, yeah. Yeah. mess around a little bit. It can be Westworld. still there. It's Again, hmm. first, first two seasons of Westworld, amazing. And then it just went off the, off rails, the rails. Yeah, I don't know if I got through season I, I think i got through season two i don't know if, I, I might have just bailed at the right time i seem to bail on hbo premiere shows right like i stopped game of thrones like at season four or something five and i was like nah appropriate i feel like i get out at the right moment in some of those so uh, art what what's your you think we're gonna love hate so it, it, okay hate might be a little bit i mean again obviously sure, sure, sure. um but one I, I I'm dying to try at some point. It's just it's always gonna be the thing that I push back a slot though. Um is Oh, he's gonna get props and make us look bad. Against the Dark Master. Oh. Uh the thing's about twelve inches thick. Oh god. Um and so it's it's the modern <laughs> incarnation of <laughs> I like cutting uh, it's 12 inches thick <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah no this is i know this is what you it's my wife's favorite game no uh, <laughs> um, she goes to bed with it all the time i don't understand yeah. um, it doesn't have to lance its boils <laughs> not there it doesn't baby uh but no it's um you know i am nostalgic one of the games i grew up on was iron crown enterprises middle earth role-playing game mm-hmm against the dark master is literally like a redo of that stripping oh. out the um and so IP. like right but keeping it close so you know it could be that kind of style of story um, oh, okay and nobody nobody loves <laughs> that system <laughs> nobody. Really, you're really selling it art but i have such nostalgia for it that i'm like i might just pull out that intro adventure and shove it down everybody's goddamn throats um that's the one I could see potentially hating. Cause I think like I was trying to think of like crunchier stuff, but I feel like 
now that we've done Pathfinder, like if I were to throw Harn out there, Harn is not like significantly crunchier than Pathfinder. It's, you know, you know, six of one, half dozen of another. Do we have to count six second or one sixth second increments like in GURPS or RuneQuest? Uh, <laughs> no, I'll I, I can tell you. No. Um, OK, so we'll probably like it then. It'll be. Oh, it, yeah, it won't be like, I, oh, my God. I know I've said this before, like GURPS. Ugh. There's if you know what you're doing, I think you can find the sweet spot with GURPS. Mm. Um, I think it's possible, but my experience with it has not been that ducks out there bursting into flames somewhere. It's OK. We love you, duck. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then as far as the system you might like. That's a little trickier because we've. The one I'm hoping you like <laughs> is Mithras because it's going to come up, I think, potentially in a couple different flavors. Okay, um, nice. So I have other generic systems. You know, I feel like I'm on a, like a generic system kick. But um, I also will say Castles and Crusades as a potential hate, just because it's going to be kind of like a very vanilla D20 kind of thing that we're all not interested in. But I am curious to try it once. Um, you keep bringing so, up Fantasy Age. I want to play that at some point, too. Well, Fantasy Age, you know, if I ever you know, run a fantasy game. I, I came up with like this idea. I'm going to start it in fantasy age to see what you guys think. And if it works, we'll keep it. And if it doesn't, we'll ditch it. And, you know, I've been known to switch systems in mid story. Eh. So, uh, you know, which is everybody's favorite thing to do. <laughs> Sorry, so. crack me up. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just a goddamn mess. <laughs> I'm going to pull. I've, I've listened to some banger systems in the worst way on system mastery like just some like what the fuck were they thinking and i'm just gonna like pull one of those out and just like see what like i won't tell you They're like hey i'm really interested in this like bird people rpg <laughs> and, and we'll just be like, like be stone face and yes. just like see if yeah right and that's the thing we'll have to be like sure but like is he is he messing with us <laughs> <I don't... laughs> well now it's in the back of your minds does he really want to play delta green well, that's it. We should treat every game we pick like a game of chicken. No, no yeah. I'll do it. Oh, I, yeah. I want you to do it. <laughs> Can't wait to play Tales from Equestria. <laughs> is that like a My Little Pony kind of? It is indeed the My Little Pony 5e game. <laughs> so many things coming together. So many, yeah, that, so many like, things. That's, that's like too easy. Like these things that they cover are just like the math doesn't work or mm. it's like I don't know. It's It's wild. But okay. So We've teased some stinkers. What was everyone's favorite system of the past year? Do you want to go, Patrick? Go ahead, Art. You start. Best system, I think for me, I am going to go with CBRPNK. Nice. Just because it really, like I was saying earlier, it really opened up my eyes to lighter rule sets, Forged in the Dark. You know, just exactly it got me thinking, what do you really need for a role playing game? Um, mm. And I think it was it was, you know, I, I mentioned like when I played Cyberpunk 2020, it was kind of intimidating when I was a kid. And then all of a sudden here was this thing that's like it just moved. It was really easy. Um, yeah, no, I, I think that would be mine. Damn. Nice. Well, wow. Call of Cthulhu. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, I think it was Pathfinder. Like, I just had a ton of fun with Pathfinder. Oh, it was, nice. It was a fucking good time, man. Yeah. Yeah. Pathfinder for me, for sure. I mean, I'm so balls deep in Pathfinder now. It's insane. Um, but I'm nowhere. Like, there's still so much to explore and so many cool things I want to do with Pathfinder. Um, runner up, probably Cyberpunk Red. I mean, Basin's really mm -hmm. cool, but it's so light. Um, yeah. I'm impressed by the crunch of Cyberpunk Red is what I'll say. Yeah, it was it was definitely smooth. It was it was really, really it was smooth, but crunchy. Yeah, exactly. Like and it did GF. combat right. Mm -hmm. You can it, dodge and have armor. That's right. That's right. Your armor does not make it harder to hit. It absorbs damage like God intended. Eh. Um. Oh. Oh. No. 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 I know. This is the hill. <laughs> there, there he goes. goes. So what about like, um, you know, we did best uh, system. What about best setting? If, if they can be. Oh, mine's Midnight Melodies for sure. 
It, it's not so much a setting as the premise, right? I, mm-hmm. I don't know. Maybe that's cheating, but uh, mm-hmm. I'm going to go Midnight Melodies because I was so impressed with it. What about you, Patrick? Vason. I love the Vason world. Mm, nice. It's so nice. good. It is nice. so good. Art? Uh, I'm going to go with Midnight Melodies as well. Um, and yeah, if you ever, you know, Midnight Melodies, the campaign edition, whatever system yep. that kind of takes the shape of i'm i'm there <laughs> i don't know if cyberpunk red was the right choice for it but i was like well i'm gonna get creative with this and like make it midnight melodies well no well yes but i think that sort of gets to the strength of the setting like it was so impactful you know it was so cool that we were both kind of buzzing from it and you're like i got i gotta stick it in i don't yep. care what the next thing is it's, it's coming along um well like world of darkness <laughs> <laughs> i'm only half kidding there's the one where you like play dead wraiths and you like go between worlds um i don't know i gotta think about that <laughs> is this a, is this the thing that we're doing Are, I was like, what, that means. That, what the fuck are you talking about <laughs> anything that causes me to confront feelings and role playing i'm out <laughs> well i mean is that Okay, so I've never had the chance to play World of Darkness. Is it, I mean, obviously it's not a dungeon crawl. What, is it like just narrative heavy stories? Are we going to be like doing yeah. romance? Like narrative like... heavy stories plus a lot of like political intrigue and stuff like mm. that. Like combat's supposed to be fast and then you're also playing, a lot of the old timers play for the meta plot. Right, okay. but you don't have to do that because they've kind of gone away from the meta plot, which is great for someone like me who's getting into it. But like, I think you're playing for the plot and like how the world shakes out for for World of Darkness more than anything. And this is fine. You know, I gotta say, the idea of political intrigue in a role playing game seems fascinating. Mm-hmm. Um, That's a vampire. And do you think vampire is the system to do it? Like, are, do you can oh, yeah, other systems? Yeah. That- yeah, I mean, you played uh, Vampire, the PC game. Like, the, there's all the, the like yeah. inner fighting between the vampire brouhaha's, mm-hmm. and like then you can throw in other, you can throw in Fey and Werewolf, and mm. you know what what sect is popular in Kansas City versus what sect's popular in Alabama. Okay, all, all right. right. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man. So Patrick, your love affair with the University of Alabama sports programs, did it start like at a young age or is it something that developed <laughs> as you got older? <laughs> <laughs> oh man. I have the funniest too... part. Oh sorry, go ahead. I said I have too many teeth to be an Alabama fan. So mm. I have all of my real teeth. So shots fired. You know. <laughs> it's all right. Uh... <laughs> I think the funny thing there. is we'd lose our Tuscaloosa listeners if they had internet. Exactly. <laughs> if they if they knew what a computer was. Just mm. kidding. I'm an Alabama fan. I can make that joke. Uh, are you really? Yeah, not like my favorite, but yeah, my uh my grandpa grew up a huge Alabama fan and then his youngest daughter went to Auburn. And so <laughs> like now he supports <laughs> Auburn, but like he was really happy when I started watching Alabama with him. Oh nice. He, Very nice. Yeah, daughter, my mom grew up a big Alabama fan too. The one she didn't go to Auburn, but daughter went to the correct school. Everybody mm-hmm. else is wrong. It's okay. <laughs> Bo knows. You should. You should know. I. It's. It is. Yeah. I do love Bo. That's everybody loves Bo. I'm so sad that Chuck is not going to be on TNT anymore. Anyway, that's sports talk. This is an RPG podcast. We don't talk about sports here. No. You know what? I, I gotta say. Did either of you guys? Um... Speaking of anthropomorphic things 25 minutes ago, <laughs> um, did either of you guys jump on the, the TMNT re-release that's coming out? No, because it wasn't coming with PDFs, right? Oh, right, right, right. Yeah, yeah. yeah that was a big kick in the nuts that I said. No, and I understand it was a distribution rights things, but mm. yeah. I'm sorry. And then I saw, like, I was looking at uh, uh, Heavy Gear 4th Edition, and, like, the print plus PDF was over 100 bucks. I'm just like, like oh. Where did you see that? On the print on demand on uh, Drive Through RPG. Oh man, I, I gotta double check where I was looking. Um, yeah, because you know, I I mean, I will confess, I did jump on that TMNT reprint just because of nostalgia. Sure. But then I gotta say, one of the coolest things that I've seen, and I don't know what the potential is there yet, but Savage Worlds did 
an adaptation of like palladium like rifts Mm -hmm. Mm. and i feel like ninja turtles is also a palladium game i'm curious if there's enough overlap with the rifts general system Mm -hmm. that and i know somebody made like a a ninja turtle sort of alike for savage worlds yeah i gotta look into that because i loved ninja turtles when i was growing up i still want probably more than anything more than a lancer game or a mech game i still want a hellboy or bprd game like more than anything i had my cockroach character all ready to go and I, I know i want to be in it i think i mean i'd run it but I, like it's still my dream setting is to like be in a what would you BPRD. what would you play that in like would you do monster of the week or something for for uh um, what What's the thing we flirted with art, but we never got around to it. Um, oh. There's a PB, PBTA that is very much intentionally Hellboy. Mm. Yes. Not, I mean, you can do Monster of the Week. Um, is it a, it's not Apocalypse. Um, apocalypse Keys. Yep. Yeah. Apocalypse yeah. Keys. It's very much like you even flirt with becoming the, the beast of the apocalypse if you push it too far. Hmm. Um, and uh, very much that. But then if I was doing BPRD, like that's a a different tone, right? I mean, yeah. that's like more investigative. So I want, um, like into the odd would work, but I like crunch. So I don't know. Yeah. Not five uh, right. e. That was a terrible fucking decision. Yeah. Yes. Right. Right. And so I was actually kind of curious. So, you know, Matt, I'll ask this question. I think the answer, because I'm basing it off what you just said, like you know, the setting you're dying to play that doesn't have a system. Do you think it's Hellboy? Um, mechs, uh, like things I want to play in, not GM. Mechs, which I want to GM too. Hellboy, and I just had one, and now oh, uh, Twin Peaks. Mm. Okay, so those are three settings that don't. Those are like I want. That's what I want to play. Yeah, yeah. Okay, but they don't necessarily have a system. There's At lots the of mech ones. That's a bad one. But like, there's no tw- true Twin Peaks right game. Right. There's lots of things that try to do Twin Peak things. And Hellboy had a GURPS third edition supplement, and there's a fifth edition Hellboy thing. But yeah, what about you, Patrick? Is there a setting that you'd die to play in, but you just don't have a system for it, or not have that, an official system? Not that I know of. I just, okay, I, I'm I'm the boring answer on that one. How about you, Art? Um. Man, that's a good question. I probably, I mean, the one I was sort of thinking was like, uh, but this isn't like a, like Cold War Spy, but there are systems out there. Uh, I just sidestepped them and ran face first into a wall of prep. Um, <laughs> yeah. But that's but the, the, that's the art we know and love, though. <laughs> right. The the most the closest I could find for there's different systems out there, but there's a PBTA system for like cold war spies but Mm -hmm. it lacks um i i i don't know exactly what it lacks but what i wanted out of the game was for there to be like there's no sanity system in a pbta that i know of Mm -hmm. um definitely not in this one and i like that idea because again i was going for a very specific kind of cold war spy where Part of it is you do break down over time. And then there's also no, um, I want, there's, uh, there's no like flaws when you roll your character up. It's not like mm. you drink too much or, you know, you're compromised. And, you know, there, it's just very much like a, you play this type of person, like a wheel man or you use weak passwords as your login. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so, but that's, you're running that. So, like, what's your play though? Cause like, I mean, there's lots of things I want to run, and I can run all those things, but I also have, like, a very, like, if if you guys came to me and, like, Matt, what do you want to play? Mm-hmm. I, like, I know what those answers are. So you guys don't have anything that, a setting that, like, you want to, you want someone to run you through more than anything else. Um, Well, you sort of, like, Twin Peaks would be sort of it. Uh, The alien without the xenomorph is sort of my ideal sci-fi setting. Um. But a lot of games get into, you know, they sort of fixate on uh, 
the aliens in my sci-fi. Well, that, that sounds like you just want to play Mothership. Like, because I feel like Mothership doesn't have, from what I have seen, and I could mm-hmm. be totally off base, Mothership is aliens without alien. Yeah, it depends on your scenario for sure, right? Yeah. But like, there's a million of them out there, so you could definitely take Mothership and do some sci-fi stuff and mm-hmm. just not throw in. Right. The cheat answer was going to say space trucking, but there's definitely systems out there for space trucking. I just... yeah, whether the system exists or not, like and this has yeah. turned into what do you want to play most? Yeah. Uh, space trucking. I love investigative games. So like when you mentioned Twin Peaks, mm-hmm. um, you know, that's why I'm really excited for whatever the Fall of Delta Green one is coming up. Yeah, I bought I bought this book where the author chimed in on Reddit and he's like, "Yeah, my intent with this was to make a very specific Twin Peak esque area." And I'm just like, Bling. <laughs> "So yeah, I can't wait." <laughs> Patrick, so I know you just like passed on it, but there's got to be. I something did. Like- no, okay. I'm gonna go back because okay. if 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 there can be games about it, I would love to be in more super low magic, like grungy fantasy games, mm. like. Like more Conan, like give me more Conan, give me more, you know. Magic. So not necessarily dark, but specifically low magic. Yes, and cool. Cool. and more. Like I really liked the setting and stuff for RuneQuest. I know I keep harping on RuneQuest, like the the Bronze Age stuff. Like that's really mm-hmm. cool. That's a very unique take on fantasy stuff, like Bronze Age, Iron Age stuff but it, it i just i want to play in that world but without the you know fucking you move your right pinky and that's your action like <laughs> fuck well, all know, that that's interesting because you know i've talked about like i sort of had this idea for fantasy setting in my head i always meant to make it like very low magic blah 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 but you know fantasy age is not that i was just kind yeah. of resigned to the fact of like yeah, i'll just use a fantasy system it'll be fireballs and bullshit but um, you play Conan is what is what it sounds like you want to play. But like, but there's other systems like you know. Well, I mean, I wouldn't use this for the the setting, but like, you know, one of the things I really love about the One Ring is there's no magic. Fair. Um, or Harn, there's basically no magic. Mm. Um, you know what that makes me think of? Or you could, Savage Worlds could be like an action, like yeah. Deus Volt, but there's not much magic. Yeah. Or Cimbarome, which has a really unique magic system. Like sure. magic's there, so it's not low magic, but it's mm-hmm. corruption based. Yeah, right. that's cool. Mm. Boys, we got a busy year in front of us. Because now I'm just thinking, I was like, oh yeah, like there's a new edition of Liminal Horror coming out, which is going to mm-hmm. be like that's going to scratch the itch for Twin Peaks esque control. If you played the video game Control like that or Alan Wake kind of vibe mm-hmm. going on, like the new liminal horror editions coming out. And I have liminal horror stuff up here that I can't wait to play. Um, Oh man. No, I just can't. I just can't wait for next week. Yeah. Which is awesome. Like that's a really, I, Oh boy, shit. Um, <laughs> it's happening. It, <laughs> <laughs> like I, I can't wait to get together with both of you and, and dive into something new And the exploration of this hobby has been so satisfying. And it's been, whether yeah. it's just the three of us circle jerking each other each way, each, eh. each week in and out, doesn't matter to me. Um, I'm really looking forward to all of this stuff that we're talking about now. And then just whatever else comes up, man. I guess I better get my cholesterol under control. How much how much beet juice have you had tonight? Hey, you had a gin and tonic, not a beet juice. Uh, <laughs> fuck. I had the best kind of beet juice. G and T. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> Straight from the lobster pot cup. <laughs> you know what I almost did? Yeah. I almost did a pint glass of rose. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I felt like I should bring back, you know, the G and T from the first yep. episode. No, I'm um, wearing I'm wearing the robe from the first episode, so nice. Yeah. I guys, I'm horned up for RPGs. What are we playing next week? Spies. Spies. Does that mean are we doing are we doing session zero spies? Yeah, we're gonna do a session zero because oh, we are. Okay. <laughs> yeah, because I wanna sort of I don't know if it's gonna work. Um so I, I wanna go through it, see what you guys think. Okay. I, I want to get your feedback on a lot of these steps because I made up a lot of it. So um I I and I feel like why not get the brutal news on camera? Huh. Yeah, <laughs> and and that's the thing like because it's all made up horseshit like if you're mm-hmm. like uh, i don't know if this is just tell me like that's cool um and we'll pull the ripcord or i'll switch to that pbta system you know just pull it out of the dustbin and so uh, matt and i are going to play cuban lovers that are spies 
Nice. Do I make you horny, baby? <laughs> that's that's my best Austin Powers. I can't right. wait to play every single one of these. Nice. I don't know what any of those are, but it's I'm all excited. like liminal horror and mothership scenarios. Nice. <laughs> oh, it's gonna be so good. I keep looking nice. at my mothership box. I'm like, ooh. Yeah, it's and, a and ooh. and now I'm looking at my Conan book going, ooh. God damn it. I need to. Need have to either of you read Witchburner or heard listen to a Witchburner actual play? No. 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 Okay. Oh. I, I did about three or four sessions with uh with AC once and then it fell apart. And like those two characters played so well off of each other. I can't wait to see what how you two play off of each other. Okay. Um, but like you can't look at the adventure because um it's just like it's like a one time you only get one crack at it, you know. I know we're just now Tourette syndrome. Yeah, I know, I know yeah. exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, did you guys ever, Matt? I know you and I talked about this. Um, Torchbearer, Burning Wheel. Is that born, something that ever I seemed just, of interest? I just rebought it um, just, because there was a used copy. I just sold my Burning Wheel. Okay, so you sold. Not what about wheel. Torchbearer? I bought the new Torchbearer Second Edition. The problem is, Art, mm-hmm. um, there's no Foundry module. Oh right, 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 right. We talked about this, that's... and that's the kick in the nuts because I really want to play it because just the whole concept of like. You're a poor ass shit pig farmer, pig right. farmer, shoveling shit, and you have a torch in your shit shovel. Good luck. Isn't that just Morkborg? Yeah, but it's not like so grim, dark, and like it's more like um, survival adventuring and mm-hmm. less more like, hey, this whole world is going to like shove you into its spleen and like, you know, I don't know. Fair. We need to play Morkborg and Pirateborg as well. I'm. Yeah, Morkborg is also staring me down the. Gosh, should we just like play every night, guys? What guys, if we? What, what if we... Go on. What if we played every night? Okay. And then when we get divorced, what if we move in together? Right. Can we all work remotely somewhere? No. What if I can work remotely? I can empty our kids five twenty nines. We okay. empty our retirement accounts. Okay. Mm-hmm. And we just buy lottery tickets. Nice. Like the odds have to be in our favor. Perfect. And then we can retire. Wow. Right. That's the thing. Like if you buy enough tickets, like it's guaranteed, right? That's my understanding of the math. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I think yeah, so. Yeah, yeah. Um, so <laughs> it looks like you can play Burning Wheel on Roll 20, so I guess it's just never gonna happen. You're right. <laughs> I think that's what I ran into, is it like had a roll twenty thing. I was like, oh uh, first I checked Fantasy Grounds. You know what? I, I will say this. Okay, systems that I think you would hate. I might run something in Fantasy Grounds. How dare you? Why? <laughs> because I own it. Patrick already ro- used Roll20. <laughs> and I used it for Call of Cthulhu. Roll20 is fun. You roll 20 I used it for Cult- Call of Cthulhu, too. Maybe that's why everybody... You know, I'm still a little upset and peeved that everybody sold Call of Cthulhu after we played my adventure that I ran. <laughs> <laughs> Dicks. You Correlation is not causation. It is, it is right there. behind. I will me. say, I've kept all my Call of Cthulhu this um, that's because you're a hoarder well <laughs> yes but also because inspiration I, yeah because i think like the ideas yeah. and the adventures are really cool agree so, 1000 percent. yeah um yeah i agree 76 percent. and honestly like i don't know like i i so i want to try running call of cthulhu i've never had the chance you, to run it you're not going to be allowed to run it unless you can pronounce neil arthotep Correctly. Neolarthotarp. Okay. Oh, good. Good. I don't think there's a tarp. Neolarthotope. Oh, you know, I wow. we have to stop because I just thought about that. I have the Yellow King box set. I've always wanted to do that. Oh. Oh. Right. Uh, so, yeah, but I, I've always like, and then once I started running and seeing all these people get challenged by the system, yeah. it makes me sort of like, would I, you know, the hubris, right? Like, I think I can avoid the, mis- you know, the, but, and then I'm going to run <laughs> smack into the exact same problems. The, the hubris that's happening on the screen right now is Matt attempting <laughs> to pull anything off and show off his book with the fucking green screen. Look, there it just, is. just show us your victims that are behind you, mm. Matt. It's fine. <laughs> fear agent. Nice. Fear agent wow. in Savage Worlds. Oh, yeah, yeah. Fear agent. I remember grab that. I, uh, you read Cor- that yet? Uh, I read a big chunk of the graphic novel. Yes. Yes. Awesome. It's so good. Yeah. The new um, Coriolis is going to be awesome. Oh, no, Coriolis! Like I back that. 
Me too. I'm kind of curious about the old Coriolis. I know, but I well, I but know. I think it's just a cleanup art. Like yeah. I don't like. I think you can still run the old campaign. I think just the yeah. new edition is just like improved rules. Yeah. Like I don't I thought think they were right. switching. Or is it still like the same D6? I thought they yeah, were yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, I'm almost okay. certain that that's the case. I think, I think it's, it's just, just like V2, yeah, yeah. or V1.5. Okay. Oh, uh, Starfinder uh, version 2.0 should be out sometime. Very excited for the next that. couple of years. Not Starfinder. Yeah, Starfinder. Yeah. You're talking about the Pathfinder one, right? The Pathfinder. Yeah. Not oh. Starforged. I was thinking Starforged. That's what I thought. And then yeah. I thought I was thinking Starforged as well. But nope, Star Starfinder, they're working on a second edition. Man, I wonder... Uh, I wonder if there's any interesting thought experiment to trying to figure out how to play RPGs without a VTT so that you're not limited to like we were just saying like, like well, burning wheels a problem because we're trying to didn't you guys do that for well I know you and I did it you guys did it for conspiracy, um, conspiracy and we did a conspiracist and we mm-hmm. did it for a long dark space between the stars that's true right you, did you know a little handy cam there's this wonderful thing called pen and paper mm. and like actually our friend friend of the show Ty has run a couple of games actually call of cthulhu games of all things where like mm-hmm. we rolled real dice off cam like on camera and we just yeah lots of rpgs do that yeah. yeah yeah like we could just do that and yeah because i think one of my flawed assumptions <laughs> is that i keep thinking there needs to be certain things on screen to make it watchable and I no, think our beautiful are, our beautiful oh. faces are enough <laughs> right go right, watch I think people are very happy with just watching people play an rpg and even if it's rolling dice and talking through the story i was gonna say just go watch glass cannon like they're just people sitting around a circle I, they do they in their newest season they're using foundry for like graphical images and, and battles okay. and stuff but also the downside to that is like you guys would actually have to learn the rules to pathfinder i can't oh, do that i'm sorry <laughs> well that's that is the trick though because like i mentioned like systems like harn i don't know if i could run harn without some assistance yeah. Well, and then, like, then it's just, like, and that's fine. I don't mind doing the prep, obviously, but then it's, like, hey, I'm going to do Harn, but we're going to use it off camera. So, like, read the Harn rules, which I would do, of course, but then it's, like, you know. My big thing is if it if we don't know the rules, just roll a d20 and see what happens. Like, because, again, system doesn't matter yeah, I, I do not buy into that after the last year i'll tell you that right now that system matters so much mm-hmm. it's, mm-hmm. it's like i've gotten so much enjoyment out of systems like mm-hmm. the mechanics involved are so enjoyable to me the story and the good times are the most important things i would agree with that but to say system doesn't matter would be to like say like men of irons like a top eight series or some bullshit like that like just some things just don't hold up <laughs> oh man you're just bringing outside business i like it <laughs> oh, folks I think, wow. I think thanks for celebrating with us just listening to us you know have a good time and dick around back, and dick around yeah look back on the last year and uh checking out the show over the last year and uh popping into our discords coming and saying hi introduce yourself we have games popping up on our discord um that that you don't see on the show dragon bane band of blades all that mm-hmm. stuff yeah um go pop in there patrick art thank you both for making it a amazing year of role playing especially art and patrick there's no knocking no you, no art, I... all the editing you do on the video and stuff like oh that's it's hey, so no, appreciated i'm happy to do it and um yeah i do want to thank all the people that have subscribed to the channel um we really appreciate that you've done that Really want to thank everybody who's jumped into the Discord. Um, we really appreciate that. Um, like Matt was just saying, we're getting games going. So hopefully, you know, if you're saying like, ah, oh, you know, I don't have a group and these three assholes aren't the worst, you know, <laughs> jump in. You know, like, you know, there's stuff to get get going if you wanted to try some online games. And yeah, so looking ahead, I'm just, we're going to go all reaction video all the time. Yep. Uh, nice. Well, I, I have something I'd like to thank. So you guys both thank somebody. I'd like to... <laughs> I'd, I'd like to thank sent from hell is who I'd like to thank. Mm. That's who I'd like to thank. As soon as I saw the little flash of light under you, I knew exactly. What nice. You were thank you. Sent from hell. This candle is still going strong after a year and it still oh, smells delicious. So guys stuck, 
put that in your lobster pot and smoke it. And that's, uh, I think that's probably, that's a wrap. I mean, I don't, you guys don't have fucking anything else to say after that. No, so. other than good night, everyone. Good night, guys. Good night, everyone. Good night, fellas. <laughs>